Well, it hears me thinking that everyone was here to see the security, th the um, privacy thing, and you're not. So I'm delighted to see how many people have turned up, actually. Um, <clears throat> I first presented this at Drupal Camp London, and there was a similarly large number of people attending that. So here we go. <clears throat> so my name is Paul Johnson. Uh, I'm a director at CTAD Digital. Uh, we work with a lot of membership-based organisations, charities and government, uh, through to higher education, uh, building Drupal websites. Uh, but actually, that's not what I'm here today to talk about. Uh, if you have any questions afterwards, uh, I'm very active on Twitter. I'm on PD Johnson there and on Drupal.org. You can also email me. Uh, I'd love to uh, talk more about it afterwards. So first of all, I'd like to talk about my personal contribution journey uh, that started uh, back in 2011 at DrupalCon London. I, like maybe you are, uh, were eager to get involved, but I didn't really quite know what my place was. I, I, I was no longer a developer, and it kind of took me a while uh, to, to find my place, and hopefully by the end of this session, uh, maybe you will find yours too. So my passion falls well outside the, uh, the code. I love to capture the moment, uh, telling Drupal story through the lens. Uh, I can often be found in the contribution room at Drupal events, but I'm not coding. I'm editing photographs, I might be writing a blog post, or uh, driving Drupal social media. So you might say I'm an imposter. Uh, it seems I'm amongst friends as well though. Uh, because there's much more to this thing called Drupal uh, than the code alone. So, um, what are we going to learn from this session? So, I want to explain why contribution without code is so valuable, uh, the motivations that you might have to contribute, uh, why working together is better, where you can go to find places to contribute, and how to get started. And you're in no better place than at DrupalCon to do that. So, according to Open Source Guide, our website, uh, a common misconception about contribution uh, into open source is that you contribute code alone. Maybe that's because open source is source as in code. Uh, and maybe that's a subconscious thing. And historically, open source projects have neglected non code contributions. But you'll be doing the Drupal project a huge favour by offering to pitch in with these types of non code contributions. And for a long time, the Drupal project has recognised the importance of these kinds of contributions. Indeed, Dries has said fostering the Drupal community is actually more important than managing the code base itself. So the man at the top thinks it's a good idea. So why do people contribute? Well, often uh, people say that it improves their existing skills, they get to meet new people who may be interested in the same thing as them. Um, maybe they uh, want their mentors and they want to help teach others. Uh, it also helps you to build public artefacts that can help to grow your reputation and take your career further. Maybe employers will see the, the outputs that you've produced. And we can see that with uh, the celebration of things like the pitch deck uh, in the session that was just on in the main stage. Uh, by definition, all your open source activity is public, which means you get free examples of what you're good at. You could also learn people skills, so open source offers lots of opportunities to practice leadership and management. Um, such as resolving conflicts even, or organising teams of people, uh, maybe even prioritising work. So uh, we do have an excellent mechanism to uh, track contributions, and historically it's been used to track code, but also uh, we can now track non-code contributions. Um, so uh, lots of events like uh, Drupal Camp London, uh, that my local uh, unconference in Manchester, they have issue queues where you can go and comment and say, I spoke at this event, and you get recognition uh, on Drupal.org that you've made a non-code contribution. And there are more and more people uh, doing this now. So all the speakers at this event will benefit from this mechanism. And that's really good for growing your uh, visibility and also your employer gets recognised, so it actually has an effect, positive effect on your employer. Uh, so that they start to become more visible on the um, on Drupal.org uh, in the um, marketplace. But personally, 
I'm more fueled by the, 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 the human side of things. The, just the kick that I get if someone says that you know, they've um, achieved something because of something I've done or they've liked something I did or just seeing somebody grow as an individual, you know, it's really powerful. So I asked Twitter um, why members of the Drupal community contribute and this is what they said. So uh, Donna Benjamin over in Australia, uh, she spends nearly all of her time, time trying to persuade people to contribute and she feels like it's a virtuous cycle um, and the more that you put in, the more you get back as well. Uh, Paul Rowell, who uh, helps to organise Drupal Camp London, wanted to put something back into the community that helped him when he was younger and now he's one of the leading forces in Drupal Camp London. And then we've got Barris. Uh, he always felt that it was just fair to do something for all the knowledge that he's got out of the Drupal project. Uh, and he's been responsible for uh, uh, helping to organise the blue, blue, the um, Splash Awards that are happening tonight. And then you've got, uh, got some... I'm going to struggle with some of these names. Uh, <laughs> well, lads. Uh, he talks, he's an owner of a business, um, but he likes to uh, know that um, his team are starting to learn faster uh, by working with other people who've got common goals and interests. Uh, there are people who have um, gone before him and his team. Uh, we're not learning things twice. And then you've got uh, Kirsten over in the USA. Uh, she likes to support people uh, that are doing a lot more than her, so she often works as a facilitator, and that's a super valuable contribution, so she's working in things like the contribution sprints. So hopefully uh, you can see something which you, resonates with you from your perspective. Um, so, but I also hear a lot of people saying, well, uh, there's some, something that's holding me back. So I'm intimidated and I don't know where to start. That's a fair thing to say, because when you go to Drupal.org, it's not, in, not entirely the most welcoming place. And uh, Rachel, who's taking photographs at the moment, uh, is actually working on a project which we'll mention later about how we can improve that experience, and you can be a key part of that this week. Uh, so there are plenty of people in our community. Kathy was on, uh, mentioned on stage earlier, and she's uh, an awesome individual. She's one of the mentors. And, and she gets a real kick out of helping people to uh, start their contribution journey. So um, perhaps go and have a look on Slack. Uh, for people like her, there is a, a contribution room in Slack. And don't worry about big groups. There are lots of intimate ways in which you can just, you know, one-to-one -one or in small groups that you can participate. It doesn't have to be one of these big showy uh, activities. I don't have enough time to contribute. Well, uh, Suzanne, uh, yeah, she, she recognises that every small contribution helps and there are lots of ways to provide valuable input which doesn't involve a lot of time. So even just providing your opinion on something can, is really valuable. Or even just sharing on social media is, is a contribution to Drupal because we're getting the word out there. And there's a really good place to go. Uh, I'll share these slides afterwards. But uh, this, this node on Drupal.org has got tons of 30-minute tasks. And it's, it's divided into lots of different disciplines. So I, I defy you to find something that you, you wouldn't, wouldn't suit you. I'm new to Drupal, and I've got nothing valuable to offer. Oh, you do. Uh, as a new community member, uh, you are new, uniquely placed to offer a fresh perspective, a new set of eyes, a new opinion, or to uh, review user experiences, or even wording that we use. Um, your knowledge is really valuable because you come with a, 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 an open mind and uh, new perspectives, uh, particularly in the usability of our system. So, um, yeah, that would be really good to, to see you start doing some work there. Um, so there's every reason why you should get involved. Um, I also want to mention that contribution is better together. Um, Afrin Smith, ex GitHub, stated that open source embodies a model for people to work together, building something greater than they can create on their own. Um, so it's the benefit of many eyes. And this chap, um, Dr. Ber Meredith Belbin, uh, did some research that proved that uh, working together with a di people with a diverse mix of behaviours is possibly the best way to operate. And I just want to quickly skim through his model, the Belbin model, which has been around for a long time. Uh, he saw that there are nine different archetypes, and you're likely to be a combination of some of them. Um, and each one has strengths, allowable weaknesses, which is very interesting to me, and don't be surprised if this person does. Uh, so... 
Yeah. Every single person has something they're really good at, but then maybe something they're not good at. And if you put two people that have got the strengths in the areas where someone's got weaknesses, you start to get something very, very powerful. So these are quite dense pieces of information, and I recommend that you go and have a look <laughs> afterwards. But um, perhaps if you skim through these, you can start to see in these descriptors uh, some of your own personal traits. So the resource investigator is, has an inquisitive nature, finds ideas and brings them back. The team worker helps the team to gel. The coordinator focuses the team on objectives and delegates work appropriately. So all, all very much di different personalities here. The plant uses their inquisitive nature to find ideas and bring them back. Um, you've got the monetary evaluator who's got a logical eye, making impartial judgments and so on. And so we've got the shaper who provides necessary drive to ensure that the team keeps moving. The implementer uh, needed to plan a workable strategy and carry out things as efficiently as possible. Um, what I suggest you do is I found a really good self-evaluation tool. Uh, so there's a, a, a bitly shortcut there. Um, try it yourself and you might find out uh, that you're slightly different to uh, who you thought you were. Um, and knowing about the Belbin model is really helpful in re and remembering it uh, about yeah, how you might what sort of teams you might seek to go and join, or maybe um, you can see an opportunity where there's a team that has not got the skills that you possess. And also, forgive yourself for the things that uh, you're not so good at. It's, it's actually a, a common. There's nothing wrong with you at all. <clears throat> and if you do that, success should follow. So now it's time to get specific. I said I, I would send you away with some things that you can do this week or in the future. Um, so. I want to start you on your non-code contribution. So I've broken uh, it out into my own different groups. I've got customers, hopefully maybe we've got some end users, Drupal here, maybe agency leaders, uh, promoters, creative people, facilitators and connectors. So here we go. So first of all, there's a great place to go to uh, on drupal.org, uh, drupal slash contribute. There's a whole load of ideas that might get you started. Uh, but let's just drive in. So, a customer, uh, it, it might not be so apparent as to uh, what you could do. Uh, perhaps you're a product owner or a project manager or a content manager or an owner themselves. So, case studies are a really valuable way to contribute to Drupal because it grows this body of evidence that Drupal's being used in uh, lots of different areas. So, there may be another organization that you are uh, similar to that. Uh, would like to benefit from Drupal, but they just need these reassurances from someone else like them. So we work with a lot of universities and they tend to be quite tribal in uh, the way they work. So that would be really helpful. Uh, make your users available to researchers. So we're looking to uh, make dramatic improvements in the way that Drupal is, uh, works in the back end uh, so that uh, people can be more uh, efficient and uh, so people who are managing content, that would be a great way to, um, to help. So uh, Suzanne, who was on stage earlier, Evolving Web has uh, got a blog about that. You can get involved. Uh, why don't you speak to other organizations like you? Um, in the UK, we have a, an organization called um, Open Charity, where a lot of the uh, nonprofits and charities actually come together, a bit like DrupalCon, but in a small scale. And they, they, they're sharing ideas, and maybe you could do that in, in your sector as well. Also uh, engage with uh, Promote Drupal, um, so uh, that's been driven mostly by, my, by agencies, so uh, we'd really like to have your participation there. Also, organisations, so if you're, if you're in an agency or you're an, an organisation yourself, it's actually very surprising how few organisations are registered on Drupal.org. Now this is really useful for you to grow your reputation or your client's reputation. Um, and it's, uh, it might end up where uh, there's a collaboration on you working on something uh, really difficult to, uh, to solve or it could be a way of you surfacing yourselves to uh, make yourselves known that you have uh, Drupal requirements for uh, staff and it may lead to, leader, uh, to speaker opportunities at events like this as well so uh, being visible on Drupal.org is really important. Some of these organisations are the ones in the UK that I've cherry picked that use Drupal. Also, uh, how about providing some financial support to maybe the Drupal Association so you can uh, have a membership-based member organisation 
organization membership. Um, or you could become a supporting partner to uh, go that little extra. So that helps with um, things like uh, making sure that Drupal.org is there and uh, events like this happen. And it can be from as little as $30 a year. Or why don't you uh, speak at an event like this? There's nothing more interesting than either an agency or a client speaking uh, at an event and we, we start to um, all, all grow uh, together. Uh, it's a virtuous cycle. Okay, so we've got founders, managers, and salespeople at agencies. Uh, salespeople, you might be surprised, uh, can actually make a contribution to Drupal. So educate your clients about open source and the Drupal Association. Uh, support your staff in their attendance at events like this. Um, lobby your staff to attend meetups and maybe speak uh, as an agency leader. I find it incredibly frustrating that uh, my staff don't want to do that willingly, and sometimes we have to persuade them. Um, Give them time to contribute back. It does give you better visibility in the marketplace on Drupal.org. And I can say, not just anecdotally, but in actual fact that uh, we, we actually have a client in the room today uh, that was um, discovered us through um, Drupal.org. Um, make sure that uh, you are registered on Drupal Planet. So there's a, a really um, vibrant uh, writing ethos in Drupal. And there is a uh, syndication tool on Drupal.org called Planet. Um, you can register your agency or your organization on there to go out to a very large audience each time you publish a blog post. So it's a really good thing. Um, also, uh, we've already, uh, there's a new area called agency marketing on Drupal.org. You should uh, take a look at that. And uh, maybe make your office space available to uh, meetups and uh, maybe the global sprints. There's some happening, uh, I think, in February. And enter the Splash Awards. They're actually happening tonight, but that's, uh, there's some more coming up uh, at the next DrupalCon, uh, which are global awards, so uh, I definitely would check them out. And submit a case study to uh, the uh, pitch deck. Um, why not sell your organization or your agency? Uh, it's all, all about raising your profile. George Demet, um, over in America, uh, he works for Palantir, and he says that the increased visibility and status within the community, which this generates, helps drive uh, sales and also uh, retain or recruit um, talent. Uh, furthermore, uh, the leadership of an organization uh, attend chief executive officers meetings and summits, uh, brilliant for knowledge transfer. Uh, there's a CEO dinner tomorrow evening that's being organized by um, Wanshu and um, Danny Cariola, Exovate, yes. Um, also participate in surveys, so there is a, st a state of uh, Drupal annual survey and there's also the CEO survey. Uh, they all help to, uh, for us all to run better businesses. So there's no end of opportunities here which may not be immediately apparent when you go onto Drupal.org. So uh, Jakob Brockwitz uh, is in charge of the web form module uh, and he's talking about uh, something which is similar to the issue that we were talking about with the privacy where uh, evaluators often wonder whether things are supported uh, and where can they go for help. Well, uh, there are um, fundraising initiatives to help uh, ensure that there is that support uh, through Open Collective and his is one of them. Uh, this session today has been recorded uh, and it's... Um, Kevin Thule uh, is involved in that. He was here this morning setting it up. Um, he's, oh, I had to correct this slide. He recorded a thousand uh, sessions by January when I first did this session. Now it's 2000. They're all on YouTube. Massive library of, of learning materials. Can't do it with a bit, without a bit of support. Okay, over to the promoter. So this is a really powerful blog that I, uh, I re read by um, Sarah uh, Watcher. Butcher, I really can't say her name, um, and it was entitled Don't Feel Like an Expert, Share Anyway. Basically what she's saying is uh, there is no magical amount of experience that will suddenly make you worthy of sharing your ideas to the world. Do it anyway. And I, I kind of live that uh, mindset. And um, yeah, writing is a really great way of, of um, uh, getting more ideas in from other people and opinions, or, but also uh, just... Um, yeah, making an eye better, dear better. Uh, write about your experiences in Drupal, create conversations and debate, uh, write tutorials about a project, edit and create documentation. Uh, you don't need to ask for permission to go and uh, edit documentation, just go for it. 
uh, write tutorials about the project and how it can be used. Uh, and then there's our good old friend Promote Drupal again. Creatives. Uh, so the writer, the user experience designer, the visual designer, the content strategy uh, expert, and even the translator. So Christina uh, Trumlas was on stage and her team are developing the new theme for the admin of Drupal called Claro. Uh, I spoke to her this morning. Uh, if you go into Slack and look at the admin UI Slack channel and the admin UI design channel, there's plenty of conversations going on where she'd welcome some more support from creative designers. Uh, if you've got UX skills, uh, there's a usability issue queue, which I've linked here. Uh, and the accessibility team are always looking for help um, and it's lacking in most areas, testing, user experience, UI changes and there's no coding required whatsoever. Um, and this is where you need to go and start uh, and there's an issue queue there so you can go and look for us uh, to start off with uh, issues if you uh, go by status of uh, needs review. Uh, that would be a, a really low bar for you to start your, your experience there. In fact, I've just uh, got a screenshot here. This is exactly what you do to fill the needs, needs review is just basically um, the final stage before something can um, uh, be committed. And there's also guidelines here. So uh, there are um, issue queues for uh, content. So you can go and read applications for companies to be listed on Drupal.org. There are case studies as well. Um, and all you need to do is go and look at the issue, follow the guidelines. It's a self-guided thing and it takes about 10 or 15 minutes, but you're making a real difference because there's actually a backlog of case studies which need to be proved uh, on Drupal.org. Um, and it makes sure that the, um, the marketplace is, is still up to date and uh, relevant. Um, and Baddy is saying, yeah, basically we need a, a lot more people to do that. And also translation. So there are two areas where you can start to contribute. If you're multilingual, we'd love to have you um, work in localized.drupal.org. There's a, a mechanism there to um, provide skills there. And also the, there's a boff, a bit of a feather conversation on Tuesday, uh, tomorrow, uh, where I can actually help you to start participating in the translation movement of the pitch deck. We've actually got 16 languages at the moment and they just seem to be growing. Uh, so there's a whole like, global initiative going on right now. And also uh, documentation is important. It's a huge barrier to entry for new people. Um, so you may be new to the project, but you're just perfectly placed to be able to review um, the uh, documentation. So uh, there's a bit link here uh, where there's a project that's been run by Rachel um, to improve the first time contributor experience and also in the documentation so uh, if you can speak to Rachel afterwards or go and speak to uh, Matthew Radcliffe um, that would be wonderful. Uh, the facilitator so we're nearly there um, we've got educators, project managers, uh, agency owners, event organizers, mentors these are people that can help to uh, others to achieve their potential. So um, Shannon Vets. Uh, talks about how Drupal actually changed her co complete career path. She started on s really small projects just as a beginner um, and she had a really warm welcome to the core team. Um, she would never have excelled in her career uh, to the level of experience she has today without the experience that she's had and she's absolutely dying to, to welcome you as well. So. Um, she, she can be found here and she has an open invite if there's any project managers out there that want to start getting involved in, in uh, helping with the Drupal project, um, do reach out to her. I think she's probably here at the conference today. Um, and also, uh, as the proverb says, it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a, a community to raise a healthy open source project. Um, at last year's Drupal Europe, um, this was the embodiment of that. 40 people volunteering their skills, all essential to the smooth running of the event. Most of them were non-code contributions. So these are the mentors at the um, contribution event that happens uh, this Thursday. Uh, a lot of the people will be here again. Um, and there is a table uh, for Promote Drupal already um, for this, but there will be lots of opportunities for non-code contributions. And Drupal camps and Drupal events really can't happen without people like you um, making them run smoothly. Developers are not particularly good at organising things, so um, I think there's a lot of people in the room who probably are. 
Um, and also, uh, just in, in, in an informal way, um, you are the types of people, perhaps project managers, PMs, um, agency owners, managers, uh, who are really good at helping other people to succeed. Um, so uh, there's, you can facilitate very beneficial conversations, uh, at lots of <coughs> activities that are happening. Uh, finally, we've got the connector, so the salesperson, the recruiter. Uh, yes, you can contribute too, you're the social butterfly. Uh, you are great at work in the room, uh, speaking to people, listening to their story, maybe uh, finding other people who are like, like them. Um, you have a hugely valuable role to play as an introducer, uh, not necessarily at the same event. And over time, uh, you're bound to meet people who share common interests, and in doing so, you are contributing to a fundamental, fundamentally to open source working together. So just to wrap up, uh, this week at DrupalCon Amsterdam, uh, we have uh, the first time contributor workshops, part one and two, uh, on Tuesday uh, in G109 at 10.30. And that would be a really great place. There'll be loads of people there to help on board you and, and to find uh, ways in which you can start to get involved. Uh, there's a promote Drupal table in the Diamond Lounge all week. Hopefully there'll be somebody sat there to uh, have a chat with you. Could even be myself or Rachel. Uh, and we also have the mentored contribution on Thursday in Europa for you too. So that's a, a room which is hopefully not too scary for someone who's never contributed before. There'll be loads of people there who will uh, uh, welcome you. Uh, friendly faces, uh, and then there's a pitch deck boff on Tuesday, um, and that's it. So to wrap it up, uh, non-code contribution is of equal importance to code. Uh, team collaboration leads to high-performance teams. Uh, non-code contribution takes many forms. You can start really, really small, and let's start this week. You're in the best possible place for that to happen. And that's taking a bit longer than it's supposed to, but hey -oh. <laughs> well, Thank you for listening. Does anyone have any questions? Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank if you do have any questions, if you have any questions afterwards.